Chad, I know you're thinking the same thing I'm thinking right now, which is we have two meteorologists standing Ooh. by right now to impart some weather wisdom as I we head towards the weekend. I want to know what they're thinking, they what are, they're doing over there. I'm smelling what they're <laughs> cooking, and I can't wait to get to it. Since it's close to lunchtime, let's get outside right now and how it looks as the unofficial start of spring is near. We're going to start having longer days this Sunday, mm -hmm. and also it's the spring forward. The aforementioned meteorologist standing by right now, Rob and Brendan, gentlemen. I think you're smelling more than just what we're cooking out there. I mean, <laughs> things are in bloom uh, right now, Rob. Exactly. Uh, you, you know, some of the stinky trees yep. are one of the things that people will notice, that the seasons are changing. And, Brendan, the first shot that we showed you was in Southern California, the mm -hmm. green rolling hills of Chino. This is a special time of year uh, because everything starts coming online, all these plants for better or worse. And it's not just Southern California. Mm -hmm. I mean, look out. I'm here locally. Mm -hmm. Everything is green. Things are blooming. It's spring. As I like to say, this is when Dublin, California looks like Dublin, Ireland. So let's go ahead and get into the good and bad. Now, if you've noticed in the background, a lot of plants are really starting to get going. The grasses, some of the flowering trees. Uh, in the middle of the country, this is an index that monitors specifically that. Are we early or late for some of these spring blooms, as well as new leaves starting to grow from the trees and plants? In the Midwest, it's definitely at least a couple weeks early. And then when you take a look at our area, I would say by about a week, week and a half throughout the Central Valley. Now, we are in a different spot. We irrigate a lot of our land, but the natural grasses on some of the places that are not irrigated, they are definitely coming online, and you'll notice it outside. If you spend any amount of uh, outdoors, you'll notice it. Now, there's good and bad with this. So let's go ahead and show you one of the good things. We have some of the best wildflowers in the country right here in California, both Northern and Southern California. The season is roughly February through May. I added in February because in Death Valley right now, mm -hmm. they are starting to see some early wildflower blooms, which is always a very special thing. Now you can go to the coastal hills. The grapevine is oddly a really good spot. One of the best places in the country is Table Mountain just outside of Oroville. That's where that photo was taken. And folks, remember, when you take photos, that's all you really need to do. You don't take the flowers, you stay on the trails, be considerate, that's one of the biggest gripes we get during wildflower season, that people just don't know what they're doing, they wanna be surrounded by flowers and they ruin it for everybody. And leave it the way you found it. Exactly. And uh, now there's some bad. The other thing that happens is that everything is growing and this is coming online just about right now. This is pollen. Uh, this is really one of the major triggers for allergies. The season is roughly March through May. This is very difficult to forecast, and the reason why is because people's allergies tend to be very personal. It could be trees, it could be weeds, it could be plants, it could be your own pets, which, which very often shed during this time of year. Now, there's one magic formula for this. Because it's so personal, how do you forecast for that? Well, what we tend to see over the years and years that we've been doing this is that the dry, windy days in March, April, and May is usually when the pollen is the most abundant, and that's the most likely time to trigger your allergies. And the other thing, too, is if your pet goes outside, mm -hmm. right, and it's in that pollen, so right. not only is your dog shedding, right, mm -hmm. but your dog could be tracking that pollen in and just compounding the issues there. That's a double whammy we don't want, but it can happen. Absolutely, yeah, and part of this, too, is because we've been so warm, not just right. here in Northern California, but really uh, across most of the United States over the last three months. In fact, it's the warmest winter on record in parts of the Upper Great Lakes. So let's jump in here now, and uh, I wanna show you this here because this is the Climate Shift Index and the departure from average. So it's telling us two things. It's telling us how war how much warmer than average we were or cooler than average. That's your departure. It also tells you how much of role climate change uh, played uh, in these warmer or cooler than average temperatures, right? So this starts in December. This is December 1st. You see December started a little warmer than average there, climate shift index one or two, and then it was pretty uh, average through the rest of the month. Then right around the new year, we started seeing warmer than average temperatures and climate change was having an effect on this about a, a climate shift index of two to three, even a level four in some of these days. And it started again right around the new year. Start of January, then we saw that flip. Then we were back cooler than average. And then the end of January, remember we had those 70 degree days right at the end of January going into February. We had some climate shift index days of level five there. Uh, and then the rest of February, we had those colder storms. We were cooler than average. And then we've even had a few days uh, at the end of February where it did warm up again. And we had that climate shift index playing a role. Taking a look at the, the map for the rest of the country, and we can see some more climate shift index days over the winter months. In fact, like I said at the top of the broadcast there, right, the upper Great Lakes, upper Midwest, seeing climate shift index days of two or higher, more than 40 days 
over the last three months there. It's been an exceptionally warm winter in the Great Lakes and upper Midwest. Somewhere like Minnesota has seen a very, very warm winter uh, for what they would normally expect, right? And just kind of breaking it down, what the climate shift index is. Uh, level two means dominant climate change influence. Climate change made these conditions less two times more likely. And as you work your way up, level four, or level five, at least four times, at least five times more likely. And so across much of the country, climate change has had a role this winter. Take a look at live radar and satellite now jumping into the weather. That was climate. Let's talk about the day today. That's your weather. Uh, things are much quieter today. We do have some snow showers across the high country. Some clouds down near Stockton, Modesto, otherwise nice and sunny here in Sacramento. 50 in Roseville, 48 Placerville right now, 57 Stockton, 55 in Modesto. In the big mountain backyard, plenty of sunshine, 57 degrees. Winds are variable at about five miles per hour right now. Through the daytime, high temperature about 64 degrees and we're going to have clear skies through the daytime. A very average day for the time of year. Average high 67. We're pretty close to that, just a little bit below. 64 Sacramento and Elk Grove, 65 Stockton, 64 Modesto, 50s in the foothills, 40s up in the high country this afternoon. We're going to keep that chance of some showers uh, in the foothills and the Sierra, but then we dry out. Look at Friday. Friday is going to be quiet across the region. Just a few clouds in the high country. Then we've got a brief chance and just some light showers coming through Saturday afternoon in the valley. It will bring just a little bit of snow, especially up to the Plumas County Mountains. We are going to be warming up, though, over the next seven days. We do have some 70s on the way. The weekend, we're going to have those shower chances Saturday. Better chance on Sunday with some snow in the high country. And then one more system pushing through on Tuesday. Beyond that, we really start to see a warming trend. So there's that system through the weekend. Saturday, Sunday, even lingering into Monday. One more push on Tuesday. Then there comes that high pressure, and that is going to settle in as we go into the middle part of March. And that means temperatures will be warming up.